The USS Enterprise has gone through several versions, each with its own unique design and specifications. But it has always been the Federation's flagship. The Enterprise has a rich history in the Star Trek franchise, dating back to its first appearance in Star Trek, the original series. And it has always been at the forefront of space exploration. Each iteration of the Enterprise has played a significant role in the missions and adventures of its respective captains, cementing the ship's legacy as a symbol of diplomacy, heroism, and exploration in the Star Trek universe. Let us now examine each of them individually. Number 1 on the list, XCV-330 This pre-Federation era Enterprise XCV-330 was first seen in the 1979 movie Star Trek The Motion Picture. She was the first spaceship to carry the name Enterprise. With its distinctive ring-shaped engines, the XCV-330 is a starship of myth, seen only as an illustration or painting. The spacecraft was designed as a Starliner, a manned interstellar probe in the mid to late 21st century as one of Earth's first attempts at interstellar travel. It was the only one of its kind to reach Alpha Centauri. The rest were surpassed by newly designed, faster-than-light spaceships. The ship was 300 meters long and weighed around 52,700 metric tons. Number 2. Enterprise NX-01 She first appeared in 2001 movie Star Trek Enterprise and she was the prototype of a new class of cruisers. The ship was between 225 to 230 meters long and 135 meters wide. The NX-01 was equipped with the experimental Warp 5 engine. Under Captain Jonathan Archer, the NX-01 played an instrumental role in promoting United Earth's role in interstellar politics and in laying the groundwork for the creation of the United Federation of Planets. The NX-01 was decommissioned because its technology was really behind the times compared to the Vulcans. Number 3. USS Enterprise NCC-1701 When Starfleet determined that in order to enhance the expansion and safeguarding of the Federation, a sturdier and versatile exploration vessel was necessary. The name Enterprise remained inactive until the introduction of the Constitution I class of starship, when the USS Enterprise NCC-1701 was commissioned in 2245. The Constitution class starships were the most important, and advanced Starfleet ships used in the second half of the 23rd century. The NCC-1701 was specifically intended for extended missions, requiring minimum external assistance. It gained recognition for its endeavors in exploring and engaging in diplomatic activities around the galaxy. Number 4 we have NCC-1701A. Following the total destruction of the Enterprise NCC-1701 in the movie Star Trek The Search for Spock, a new USS Enterprise A was commissioned in 2286. Almost identical in look and technical specifications to its predecessor, the new Enterprise had a number of individualized customizations, including several maritime relics, such as a steering wheel from a sailing vessel. The ship is around 305 meters long and a total of 23 decks. Following its decommissioning, the Enterprise A's battle damage was repaired at Space Dock, and the ship was preserved as a museum exhibit. Number 5. NCC-1701B The Enterprise B was first seen in the 1994 movie Star Trek Generations. Over the course of the Enterprise B service, she was remembered as a key figure in exploring beyond the Gurami sector mapping over 142 star systems and making first contact with 17 different civilizations. The Enterprise B was also the first Federation Starship Enterprise in 30 years that did not have Captain James T. Kirk in command of the vessel. 
The Enterprise B has a total length of 469 meters and 180 meters wide. The Enterprise B was lost in deep space with all hands after the crew contracted a mysterious illness. Next, NCC 1701C. The Enterprise C was first seen in the 1990 series Star Trek The Next Generation. At 526 meters long, the Enterprise C was an Ambassador class cruiser, commanded by Captain Rachel Garrett. She was destroyed attempting to defend the Klingon outpost Narendra III from Romulan attack, and this had the effect of boosting the deteriorating relations between the Federation and the Klingon Empire. Although the starship was equipped with state-of-the-art weaponry and defensive systems, it was no match for the combined power of four Romulan warbirds. Number 7. NCC 1701D The iconic Federation flagship Enterprise D was the crown jewel of Starfleet in the mid-24th century. The massive, powerful ship took on everything, from diplomatic missions to Borg attacks, under the watch of Captain Jean-Luc Picard. The Enterprise D met with an untimely demise in Star Trek Generations when Klingons found a way to penetrate the shields of the Enterprise, stunning the ship's crew and inflicting serious damage before the Enterprise was able to destroy the Klingon vessel. The Enterprise is itself a protagonist in the next generation. The ships of this class are 642 meters long, 465 meters wide and has maximum warp speed of 9.2. 8. NCC 1701E The Sovereign class Enterprise E was designed as a battleship specifically to take on the threat of the Borg, which it did in style in the movie Star Trek First Contact. The Enterprise E took a beating during the three Star Trek The Next Generation movies in which she was featured most notably in Star Trek Nemesis, where it rammed the Romulan Praetor Shinzin's ship, the Scimitar, smashing the front of the saucer section. The Enterprise E was never destroyed on screen, but Star Trek Picard Season 3 revealed Captain Worf took command after Jean-Luc Picard's promotion to Admiral. Number 9. NCC 1701F the Odyssey-class Enterprise F originated in the Star Trek online video game, but was officially made canon by its appearance in Star Trek Picard Season 3. The 1,000-meter vessel was under the command of Admiral Elizabeth Shelby. The Enterprise F was due to be decommissioned in 2401 following Starfleet's Frontier Day celebration. Tragically, the Borg assimilated every Starfleet officer under age 25, and Shelby was killed during the takeover of the Enterprise F. The Odyssey-class starship wasn't destroyed on screen, but it was retired to make way for the next starship Enterprise. Number 10 on the list, we have NCC-1701G. The ship was originally designated as the USS Titan under the command of Captain Liam Shaw. By 2402, the Titan A was renamed and rechristened as the Enterprise G, in honor of the crew of the Enterprise D for their contributions in battle against the Borg. The Constitution 3 class starship followed the traditional saucer, section engineering, section warp, nacelle layout common to most Starfleet vessels. Little else is known about this vessel as it was only mentioned by name. Number 11, NCC 1701J. Enterprise J was mentioned in the 18th episode of the 2001 Star Trek Enterprise series and involves time travel and features a scene in which Enterprise J appears. Enterprise J operates in a possible timeline during the 26th century. The Enterprise J's exterior was only seen in the background in the form of graphics on a computer screen. Based on estimates, the ship is approximately 3,220 meters long and 2,650 meters wide, almost five times the length of the Enterprise D. And lastly, number 12, USS Enterprise NCC-1701 Reboot. 
The last one on the list is a start over from the Kelvin era. In this timeline, the USS Enterprise may be the most mistreated of all the Federation starships. It took a lot of damage from the time-displaced Romulan mining ship led by the crazy Nero and the USS Vengeance, which was commanded by Admiral Alexander Marcus. The Enterprise made it through both of those fights, but it was quickly destroyed by the swarm ships led by the mystery crawl in Star Trek Beyond. Captain James T. Kirk was put in charge of the USS Enterprise A in the Kelvin timeline at the end of Star Trek Beyond. And that is all for today. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Take care.